Hey guys, what's going on? This is Marshall Dice, known as Adam Campbell, with Duncan Davis from Sherwood Games. So Duncan, tell me, you've been at you've been at the game of Kickstarter for a while. Now. How is the process of Kickstarter go about? Well, I think the biggest thing about Kickstarter is anyone can come up with a really great idea, and most people can come up with pretty interesting marketing. I think the most difficult thing is building a fan base, is going out there and coming up with a group of people that like you and the style of design and, desi and the way that you publish games, and that will come to Kickstarter after Kickstarter saying, you know, Sherwood Games, that's a company I like. I'm going to back that game because I trust that Sherwood Games is going to make a good game. Very nice. For Very anyone nice. getting into Kickstarter, I have to just rep the two people I think are the best in the industry, James Math and Joey, I'm going to mess up his last name, um, Stonemeyer, I believe it is where I think that they are two people who have been doing Kickstarter the most, who both write blogs and maintain uh, Facebook groups of questions that designers and developers and publishers will come and ask. And I think that they are two of the most knowledgeable, helpful people in all of this stuff. So much so that I've actually been working with James Math to sell some of his stuff at my boots as well, so that I can help push it forward and pay it forward for all the times that he's given me great advice in running my Kickstarters. Thank for you. those of you that are looking new Kickstarters of your own, I would highly recommend First, making your game and prototyping and developing and getting it to a place where you feel like you can present this and it is a great object that you can show off. And sometimes this means investing in a little bit of art. Sometimes this means going and making an actual copy. For example, I used a print-on-demand company to make Nine Red Chan, a game of memes, which is what I am kickstarting this fall. When you go and you demo with people, just get people's numbers, make an email list, get uh, the information so you can follow up, listen to what they have to say because People that you don't know are going to give you the most brutally honest feedback, and that's going to make your game so much better than if you just have the, the fluffy, oh, we love your game because we like you, that you'll get from your friends and family. When you're going and you build that community, then when you actually launch, you can get a good fire going on the beginning, because the first three days and the last three days are the most important for a Kickstarter. And often I see people squander their first three days because they were so eager to launch that they didn't have all their ducks in a line. Why, why are the first three days so important? So when someone sees a Kickstarter, you can see it at nowhere clear, near the funding goal, approaching the funding goal, at the funding goal, or exceeding the funding goal. The trick is that everyone wants to be part of a winner. And so during the first three days, you want to get at least 10%, although I like to get at least 30% towards your goal. And then the sooner you hit that goal, you get a resurgence of backers as people see, oh, this is 100%. This is going to succeed. I want to be part of the winning team, and I'm going to go ahead and join this Kickstarter. So, and the last three days are important because whether or not it, it could make or break a Kickstarter? Yeah, so, the, so there are three things about the last three days. The first is that if you're close to your funding goal, like 80, 90%, then everyone's like, oh, I want to help that, I want to help that Kickstarter succeed. I want to be the one that pushes it over the edge. The second thing is if you are already a success, then people will say, oh, I want to get onto this before I miss out. I can see how many stretch goals they hit. I can see all the cool things they have. This is the best it's going to be, and I think it's awesome. I'm going to jump on. And the last one is that Kickstarter itself actually puts you higher in the list when you're close to the exit. So when you're just scrolling through games randomly, when you're just like, oh, I'm just going to look through Kickstarter games, you can find so many games that are just near their ending that are going out the last hour, the last six hours, the last 12 hours, the last 36 hours. And so Kickstarter itself helps people who are near their last three days get that extra little bump. Gotcha. All right. Very nice, very nice. Well. This is your fourth Kickstarter you're starting this, this fall, correct? Yep, so I'm doing my fourth this fall. I had a fifth that was in the works, but it's only a $5 game, so I decided to just make it and not go Kickstarter because it's sort of tough to get people to hop on Kickstarter for $5. I mean, you need a lot of backers to hit any kind of a goal. Now, one of the big things that I've seen at Kickstarter is the stretch goals. Like, they give extra things included in the game itself. Like, they get, like... General Dice, who's not here at the moment, I don't know where he, he's been. Uh, he's off talking with the builder or something like that. <laughs> anyway, Making some deals with the old ones. Uh, you know, uh, he, he knew about this, and he's now off somewhere fighting. It's fun. Anyway, <laughs> so I've seen many, many of Kickstarter. He's also many many of Kickstarter that he's backed. He's given him stretch goals, like he's given extra pieces, extra cards, you know, all this kind of stuff. Does it make or break a Kickstarter? Does it, does it give that extra oomph when, with Kickstarting? So, stretch goals have a lot to do with 
how your fund how you manage your funding goals it's gotten to the point in the kickstarter community where they're basically expected but the type of goals you do can be very different they can be things like upgrading the card stock or making the art a little better hiring someone a little more well known or it can be things that will affect the gameplay itself adding more cards adding different kind of cards there, it actually changes the way in which you run your Kickstarter so that you can have a game that success is $500, something very small, but it only has 52 cards. But then when you hit 750, when you hit 1,000, when you hit 1,500, you add a few more cards and a few more cards and a few more cards. And so the game grows as you get more money to spend on it. The other way to do it is you know exactly what your game is going to be and you upgrade the way things look and the components behind things as you make more money. Gotcha. And so these are two different sort of ideologies that you look and you can see they have their different success rates and minuses. One of the biggest mistakes I see newer Kickstarters, especially people in their first goal or their second, uh, uh, sorry, in their first campaign or their second campaign, is they'll go crazy with stretch goals. The best example is there is a, I, I'm going to leave the name out because I don't want to disparage anyone, but there is a, um, a game, a, um, a computer game that funded very, very generously in the millions of dollars, and their goal was 100K, and they kept on promising the moon, the sky, and the earth, and everything on it. It became, it went from a standard game with sort of a plot line that you would follow to an entire sandbox RPG with infinity classes and races and money and all sorts of management of free money market, everything you could possibly want in a game without realizing the fact that you can't actually make those things on the budget they're on. Where had they stuck fairly close to their goals and not promised the skies, they could have made their game. But they got so bogged down in promising in the momentum of their campaign that they ended up with nothing. The game didn't even come out because they just got so lost in what could be done instead of what can be done. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's very good sound advice. Thank you again for coming on the show talking oh, yeah. about Kickstarter. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. No problem. Always, always a fun time with the Dice Squad. Always a fun time. Thank you very much. But for all of us here at Dice Squad helping your Kickstarter out to you for a better tomorrow, this is Marshall Dice knows Adam Campbell with... Duncan Davis, promoing Nine Rich Hand for Sherwood Games, coming out this fall on Kickstarter. And we'll see you guys later.